I'm in my brother's room because it's night and it has some nice lighting and also my room's dirty and he's in college so he's not using it. I'm sorry! My cat is yelling at me because I left her alone. Hello, I'm Samantha. <laughs> so this video is slightly different than my other videos because it's less of an update of how I'm doing and more of a advice video for people who are going to be doing radiation. The reason I've been wanting to do this is because if you follow me on Instagram, you see me posting every single day about how I'm going in for radiation and I get a lot of questions about it, especially from people who are going to be starting radiation soon. I am going to do a little bit of update just on me at the end of this video, but this is mainly going to be kind of an, a tips. 10, no, I've got 11 tips for people going through radiation treatment. It is not focusing. I have another video that explains some frequently asked questions about radiation and it kind of goes more into detail about me. So if you wanna know that kind of stuff, check out my other video on radiation. This one is more of a things I wish I kind of knew before I went in that would make doing the treatment and stuff easier. Some of these things I knew and some of these things I learned along the way. So hopefully to whoever is watching this, this is helpful for you. <laughs> We're just gonna get into the video. Okay, so my first radiation tip is when you're going in for radiation and you're laying down on the table and you're getting ready to lay there for a long time while they're doing scans and treating you and all that, make sure you get comfortable before they start. <laughs> so obviously once they start you can't really move that much so it's very important to be in a position that you're going to be able to like be in for the whole 45 minutes that's how long it takes for me usually so obviously you're going to be in pretty much the exact same position every day they line you up so that you're in the same position every day so you may be wondering how this really makes sense like how can you not be in a comfortable position or how can you be in a different position You'd be surprised. <laughs> There's little things that can actually make a difference. I noticed this because some days I was going in and I was doing the radiation easily. I would lay there and I'd be fine. I wouldn't have much pain. And then some days I would be like, oh my gosh, this needs to end, this needs to end, this needs to end. Even though both days would take about the same amount of time. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but a lot of times when you go in for scans, they'll put this thing under your knees to make it just more comfortable so your knees are like slightly bent and they can rest on this thing. And that thing's great. It, it does make everything more comfortable. But for me, one thing that I realized was that a lot of times they would put that knee thingy, whatever it's called, too far forward. And I wouldn't notice really much of a problem with this at the beginning. But once I would lay there for a really long time, having that thing too far forward actually put a lot of more pressure where my head was resting and then it would cause my head to hurt really bad at, toward the end of the radiation treatment for that day. I wouldn't notice it at the beginning so I wouldn't move around or fix it, but I found that if I just take the two seconds to push that little knee thing back a little bit farther away from me and then make sure that it's like in the perfect spot. I don't really have any problems with my head hurting or anything. So yeah, that was just one thing for me. Obviously it'll be different for everyone so you can figure out what works for you. My second radiation tip is don't help them move you. So what this means is when you're laying on that table and they're getting ready to set you up and get you into a position, they move you around. They move you around, they kind of slide you around so that you're perfectly lined up and exactly how they want you to be. So at the beginning, this was always a little bit hard for me because when they would be like, all right, I'm gonna move you a little bit, they would start to push me and then I would lift myself up a little and try to help them push me. When you lift yourself up, it can mess up another thing that they had already set. Like, you move up your hips a little bit and kind of move around maybe it'll mess up like where your torso is or I don't I don't know but if you move yourself then it could mess something up and 
and they might have to take extra time to fix the thing that you messed up. They know exactly how much they want to move you, so if you help them, um, you, you can move like a little bit more. It just helps them. It makes it so much easier for them if you just don't move. My cat is here. So my third radiation tip is don't move. You know, I thought this was an obvious one. If you move during the treatment, they'll have to reset everything and start over and nobody wants that. It'll make your time run into other people's time and it'll make it just take longer. But all of you guys have probably had a scan before so you probably know that you shouldn't move when people are trying to take x-rays of you and trying to shoot some radiation into your body. My fourth radiation tip is when you take a deep breath, Take a low deep breath. So when I went in for radiation my first day, they were telling me to take a deep breath and I didn't really know what that meant. I mean, obviously I know what it means to breathe, but there's different ways that you can take a deep breath and I wasn't sure exactly what to do. They would just say, take a deep breath like you're jumping into a pool. And I'm like, okay, thanks. Obviously when I'm jumping into a pool, I'm gonna hold my breath, but I don't, <laughs> like I just don't. Did they want my chest to kind of move out? Because I thought that the whole point of it was to move your heart back so that the radiation doesn't hit your heart. So I'm like, do they want my chest to come out more when I take a deep breath in? Do I take like kind of a high breath or do they want me to take like a low deep breath like how people say you should breathe? <laughs> I'm not sure that it matters so much that you take the deep breath a certain way as much as it matters that you take that deep breath consistently the same way every single time. Obviously it doesn't need to be exactly the same every single time, but I just didn't know what to do at first. I was kind of trying things all over the place. They would tell me to take a deep breath in and then I would do it sort of differently the next time and then they would say that wasn't good so I would try to do it even differently than that and then they would be like, oh no, that's not right. Try to take it like you did before and I was like, I don't know how I took it before. And so it was kind of hard for me to find a way to make sure I was kind of taking a deep breath the same way every time. So for me, taking that low breath really helped me make sure that I was taking a deep breath the same way every time. And this is gonna sound stupid, but what also helped me was um, the little machine, the radiation machine, I'm laying on my back, right? And they've got like something up here and it's got glass over top of it so you can sort of see your reflection in it. This is really hard to explain. So they don't want you to let out any of the air that you breathe in. So they wanna make sure that you get that full breath and you keep that full breath. So what helped me was looking at that reflection of myself in the glass and when I would take the deep breath in, I could see my stomach move up and I could tell just by looking at that reflection when my stomach moved back down and I would let some air out or when I kept it in the same spot and didn't let any air out. That was actually really helpful for me to have that glass thing up there. So I would recommend that if you're having trouble with the whole breathing thing and you can't figure out how to take a deep breath and you can't figure out how to keep all that breath in and you can't figure out how to consistently take a the same type of breath every single time, I would recommend, this is gonna sound dumb, but laying on your back, getting some type of mirror or something where you can see your stomach and just practice breathing in and holding your breath and seeing if your stomach moves or not. That helped me so much, like I can't even tell you how much that helped me. Basically, if you don't take the same type of breath every single time, it's not going to like kill you or anything, it's just going to make the entire process take longer because they're going to know, oh, we lined you up based on this breath and you just took it a different way, so now you're not lined up and now things won't work the right way. So that's why it's important to try to be consistent and it just makes everything go faster. And no one wants to be there all day long, breathing in and out because it's just not comfortable. You know how unsatisfying it is when you are trying to like get a deep breath and you don't get a deep breath and like you keep trying and, or you like keep taking deep breaths and you just have like too much oxygen or 
carbon dioxide or I don't actually know. You don't want that. You want to get it out of there as fast as possible. You want to make yourself not tired. My fifth radiation tip is to relax. If you get anxious, it just makes breathing harder. Everybody knows this since I've ever had a panic attack. <laughs> So I know that relaxing itself is easier for some people than it is for others and saying relax is a lot easier to say than to actually do for some people. But just try to do whatever you can. For me, I wasn't really as anxious about going in for the radiation itself. It was more when I was on the table and they kept telling me I was doing stuff wrong, I would get mad at myself and that would work me up and that would make it harder for me to breathe. <laughs> I know it might be hard for someone that's going in for the very first time to be relaxed, but you know, whatever you can do to calm yourself down, it'll really help you out. My sixth radiation tip is try not to be sick. Obviously, nobody wants to get sick, but just try really hard. <laughs> take allergy medication if you get allergies. Take some cold medication if you do end up getting a cold because it's harder to breathe when you've got stuff in your chest and you can like... <gasps> Metal. Makes sense. And it's hard to keep holding your breath when you've got stuff dripping down your throat. Also, coughing. If you have to cough a lot, it can mess up your position a little bit and then they have to reset some stuff. I know you're already trying not to be sick, but it's super annoying if you're in there and you're sick. Number seven radiation tip. Don't eat a massive meal before you go in for radiation. So just imagine that you're laying flat on your back for 30 minutes to an hour and you're being asked to take a really deep breath and hold it. That's exactly what happens during radiation treatment. Um, <laughs> You don't want to be doing that right after you've eaten a huge meal. You're just going to be really bloated and uncomfortable during the entire thing. I have my radiation treatments in the morning so I kind of just get out of bed, go to radiation, and then if I want to eat breakfast I eat it afterwards. But I know that people can have radiation treatments at any time in the day so if you happen to have yours right after lunch, just eat a lighter lunch or you know just don't stuff yourself or just wait to eat lunch until after your radiation treatment. This might not be a concern to some people at all but but I just know that for myself, I would feel sick if I ate a massive meal before going to radiation and then I had to lay there and hold my breath and do all that stuff. It would just not make me feel good. So if you're like me, just eat later. <laughs> Eighth radiation tip is to maintain your weight. You don't want to be losing weight or gaining weight during your radiation treatment because your entire treatment plan is based around your size and your shape. So if you lose weight during treatment, then they'll have to remap everything. <laughs> or if you gain weight, both those things. Moves things around in your body and whatnot. Ninth radiation tip is to ask your doctor about creams or any kind of thing that you can use during radiation treatment to give you some relief. So if you're doing the same type of radiation treatment that I am, it's going to last a long time. I have 33 days of radiation for my breast and my lymph nodes, and then I have five extra days for one of my ribs. So if you're radiating the breast area and stuff for a long time, it's going to start to get red, and your skin's going to start to itch and get dry and be irritated. I use this Myoderm cream, the uh, radiation relief is pretty awesome. I can put this on like two or three times a day or four times a day, I don't know. It won't stop your skin from getting red, but it will help with the itching and any other uncomfortableness that you have. <laughs> the only thing is they don't want me to put this on right before I go in for treatment because they don't want you to put anything on on that area before you go in for treatment. So since my treatments are in the morning, I wake up, I go to radiation, and then afterwards I put this on when I get home, and then I always put it on right before I go to sleep, and then I put it on at another time in the day if I need that. Okay, radiation tip number 10. Make sure you have all the flexibility you're going to need to be able to do your radiation treatment. If you know you're going to have to be laying down on your back for 45 minutes with your arms over your head, make sure you can get your arms over your head. <laughs> I had surgery two to three weeks before I went in for my radiation planning session. They don't usually do it that quickly, but they thought that since I'm young, I would heal quicker and we could move on with radiation faster. So when I went in for my radiation planning, I could get my arm pretty high, but it would hurt. 
and so when they were doing the scans and they were making the mold and everything, I had to take a break in the middle of it. They told me, hey, it looks like you're having some trouble with this. If you want, you can come back in and do this all next week. We can push this off. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get it done. So we did get it done, but they told me that when I actually came in for my real radiation the next week, that I would need to be able to get my arm over my head and I would need to be able to hold it there for 45 minutes or however long my treatment was going to take. So I went home and I made sure I looked up the stretches and figured out what I needed to do to be able to get my arm over my head and to be able to like kind of stretch that. Because to me there'd be nothing worse than having to go into the radiation place and having them say, oh, you can't get your arm over your head so we're gonna have to push this back even more. I will also say that having to go into radiation every single day and having to keep my arm in that position every single day is a great way to stretch your arm. <laughs> it was hard at the beginning, at the end of the radiation treatments, my arm was sore and I would just really want to bring it down, but if, as I kept doing it every single day, it became a lot easier. I'm gonna show off real quick, but check it out. You see this? You see how high I can get my arm right now? Wow, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That didn't hurt at all. Radiation tip number 11. See, I made sure that there were 11 tips because I don't believe in numbers divisible by five. But anyway, radiation tip number 11 is to sleep. It's the same with chemo as it is with radiation. Don't try to do more than you can handle. Don't try to be a superhero. People aren't usually as tired from radiation as they are from chemo, but don't overwork yourself. You're, you might be more tired than you normally would be. It's taking up a lot of your day sleep, get the sleep you need, it'll make breathing easier. Yeah, don't try to do more than you can do. The radiation will be over soon, then you can go back to doing all the things that you enjoy doing. Sleep if you're tired. It's a good tip. Okay, and then now for my, I'm gonna show you my skin. I just had my 22nd day of radiation. Oof. So you can see what my skin looks like. You can tell it is very red in this area that is kind of boxed off. Um, this line is really faded right now, but it kind of goes all the way down. It's less red over here. They, they draw on me all the time. This is the area that itches the most and everything, so I put cream on it and everything. Also, I have some redness under my arm. Check out how well I have healed under there also. But yeah, so I've got some redness there and I've got some redness like on the back. I'm not gonna show you the whole breast, but obviously that side is more red than this side. It's not by a lot, like you can tell right here, like however red this is right here, it's more red than it is over here. And that's kind of how the rest of it is. Really the reddest part is this and also like a little bit under my arm, but my skin um, started to peel a little bit right here, but it's really not that bad as long as I keep using this. And you can start using this cream before you start radiation treatment. So just kind of ask your doctor uh, where to apply that cream. This kind of took a while to get this red. A lot of people don't really have much of a problem with it until they get towards the end of their radiation. That's when things start peeling and stuff. My skin, I feel like, has been holding up pretty well so far, so I'm very happy with it. Um, just kind of, kind of itches a little bit. So yeah, that is it. I hope that that was helpful for people who are going to be starting radiation soon. Like I said, I get questions all the time about my treatment. I get questions all the time about chemo. I get questions on how long it's taken my hair to come back. That's probably the main question that I get. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram. I will respond. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you think that this video will help somebody, share it with them. If you guys think any of my videos will help somebody, feel free to share it with them. This channel kind of started out as a way to update my friends and family on my progress, but I am happy to hear how much I have been helping certain people. So, yeah, share this if it will help somebody that you know. Yeah, subscribe, click the bell to get notified when I post a new video. Yeah. That's all, bye!